This is going to be a demonstration of how I DJ with Ableton Live. If you like the way I do it, then I'll make a template and I'll put it in the description of this video so you can download it. Well, first off, these are two different kinds of um, MIDI controllers that you can get. These are just two that I looked up. I have this X Session Pro. I just think it's really easy to use. You can also get um, this Gemini First Mix Pro or I don't know, anything else. Just look up DJ MIDI Mixer and these are the first two things that came up. Uh, we're going to be mapping these, the, the cross fader, the volume faders, and you can map any of these buttons to do any kinds of effects, which I will demonstrate shortly. Well, first what I did was create two decks, a deck A and deck B, two percussion decks, and I have them separated by just blank spaces. The percussion decks just have little blip sounds. Um, just that kind of thing, just to help mix in if I need it. So let's look at deck A. Um, down here I just have a 3 EQ, an auto filter, and a limiter. And I have these EQs mapped to the mixer, the low, mid, high. So you see when I turn the knobs, the low, the mid, and the high all move. I have the auto filter set up so when I, when I turn a knob, it turns on and it turns up. And the limiter just prevents it from being too loud. If you don't know how to MIDI map, you can check out some of my other videos that explain in detail how to set this up. If you click this little X button down here, uh, it's a crossfade. It allows you to sign decks, so this is deck A, this is deck B, and look at this crossfader. When I move the crossfader on my mixer, you'll notice that the crossfader moves. Now this is duplicated exactly for deck B. I have the same exact setup where I can move any of the EQs and the auto filter. Some other things you might want to map are the master volume or the BPM of the song. I have a whole knob that just changes it from 128 to 130 because I know a few of my songs are 130 and they sound better in 130 than they do in 128. The way I set up some of my songs is I have an intro, um, the beef, and kind of an outro. And the intro would just be something where... And it just loops. And then I have the beef of the song and then kind of an ending, which is just like the same kind of out loop that mixes in with whatever else I'm putting it with. So let's take a look at some songs that are not mine that you can mess around and DJ with. So I imported all of these. These are just examples. Let me just take another song, a fresh song, um, just so you guys can get an idea. Okay, now you notice as soon as I imported the song, all these little warp markers pop up and the BPM is 129.08, which is definitely not something you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of the warp markers, click Command A, and then Backspace to delete all of them. I'm going to want to zoom in right to the beginning. This is exactly where it starts. I'm going to double click, select this warp marker and delete it. I'm going to drag this over to the one spot so it ex starts exactly on the one. And I'm zooming in and that's exactly where the transient begins. If you feel it's necessary to put it here, then so be it. Uh, another thing is this is 129.08, which is not what we want. So let's just put it right to 129 and then it'll line it up. Changes to Complex Pro and now the song is perfectly ready for DJing or mixing in Ableton. By default Ableton has a master clock set up so that when you play a clip it plays to that master clock. So let's put it to none for now. So then if I just play songs, they're not on beat whatsoever. Let's put it back on one bar. So no matter what I play next, it'll be in beat. It'll be beat match. 
And that's a big problem a lot of DJs have is beat matching. But with Ableton, you ha don't have to worry whatsoever about beat matching as long as everything's set up correctly, exactly on the first transient of the song. <laughs> Not having to worry about beat matching gives you more time to worry about effects. So if you add something like a beat repeat or maybe a flanger or a gate or reverb or any other effect that Ableton comes with can be easily mapped to your MIDI controller. And again, if you don't know how to MIDI map, check out my other video. The last thing I want to show you is how to set up a Q mix which is what you hear in your headphones that, that the audience does not hear. So click on the I.O. settings. Um, if you look over here, it says Q out, master out. Uh, normally it'll just be one and two, one or two. So go up to live, preferences, under audio, go to output config. You have to enable three and four so that it's stereo, but this will only show up if you have multiple outputs. I'm using an interface that has multiple outputs. Also, um, if you have an interface with one output, you can still set it up so that it outputs maybe with your laptop headphone jack and with your uh, alternative output, whether that be a CDJ, sound card, or any kind of interface. So after that, click OK. So now that my Q is set up through 3 and 4 and my master out is set up through 1 and 2, these headphones come up so it will not... It will not solo anymore, it just cues. So now you can hear through the headphones. Other than that, good luck DJing, and if you have any other questions, just leave a message.